ideas put out. What I'm going to ask is to get up, and the only reason I ask for the microphone is because we are recording. It makes it easy to record it. Just tell us who you are so that way we can straighten it all out. And I'm going to hold people to two minutes, okay? And I've got the timer. Just form a line. Get yourself started. If you've got a question, a comment, a gripe, um, you name it, I don't care what it is. This is the process. And give them a chance to, to answer whatever it is after, you, after you've asked the question or made your statement. Mike? Yeah, yeah if you can do it in shorter than two minutes, please. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, this is an aside. Uh, uh, last Congress might have been a good time to uh, have a discussion about the future of the Sorry about that. But uh, as far as the nonprofit, just taking that another step. Would that insulate the uh, NCs from the city, or would the city give in, uh, directions to the nonprofits, which in turn would have to interpret that for the, for the neighboring town? I think that's, you see, that this, it's, that's really, I think, the problem with a lot of people. Uh, and so, um, it's true, there are many neighboring councils that, that are problematic. There's no question about it. And some of them almost are like startups. But that's not, that's not you know, citywide. The vast majority are not like that. So you do have this, this, uh, this dichotomy that I think needs to be addressed. I'd like to see Blank, in some fashion, um, given that authority to deal with setting up the direction of the uh, neighborhood council system. Because, you know, we generally have you know, some 40, 50 people who have the neighborhood councils and more that show up. And I think more would when they realize the importance of it. So I'd like your feedback on that as well. Anybody want to touch those? I, I like to respond, but go ahead. Yeah, let me do the first part, and Larry can uh, respond on the second part. Uh, on the first part, uh, we would really want to make it simple for the neighborhood councils to be able to uh, use the money. I mean, that's the ultimate goal. Uh, um, and try to insulate, uh, at least in your turn, the neighborhood council from the bureaucratic processes. Because, again, I say this, so it's been a professional career inside the that, uh, bureaucracy. It is that thing. And it's frustrating, and it's tough. And I tell folks, it takes me three weeks to get my $10 uh, validation uh, uh, paid. But it's the way the system is designed to prevent fraud, is to prevent uh, um, uh, folks from having the uh, ultimate authority of, of receiving dollars and paying dollars back now. But you all should be insulated from that part of it. And for you all to get a check in three days, five days, you know, is reasonable be able to make it easy for you. And that's our job to figure out how to make it easy for you. Yeah, I would just, just say that even though everybody's own neighbor council is, you know, maybe perfect, you know, the, the system is not perfect. So we aren't doing quarterly audits again. We, we haven't done a quarterly audit at done in six months, right? So the, the system is vulnerable, right? And we've got to find a way to make a system that is actually functional and then something that can be supported by the city sufficiently. So the question about where to decide, I think it needs to be decided in places like this. I don't think this can be the only place where you know the decision about the you know how this I mean quite honestly there was a huge opportunity in the Neighborhood Council Review Commission to kind of really think through this stuff. And it's all very hard to do, but it wasn't I mean it was really sort of tinkering around the edges quite honestly in that environment. I don't know, maybe we'll just end up tinkering around the edges again. Um, but there is a little bit of an opportunity to dig a little bit deeper, and I think there's an alignment to do that. Uh, and you know, there's a commitment from some of us who, who actually care deeply about the you know, neighbor council's existence and development that are in the mayor's office that see that we don't necessarily, it's taken us five years to learn it and understand it and respect it deeply. And so you have some people that are allies in the mayor's office and in the city council that I think would be a, a good moment to take another deeper look at it. So there's an opportunity, but it's also going to be probably a bad thing for people as well. And if, if, I, if I can add on real quick, um, just it's, it's kind of along the comments that I made about education and neighborhood activity, so if, you were, if you've been at the last two meetings, I apologize, you may hear the same, that uh, the, the first 10 years of, of neighbor empowerment in the city and the, and the department of neighborhood empowerment were about uh, creating the neighborhoods, creating the citywide system, and certifying neighborhood councils. Since that time, we're at the, as I mentioned, we're at a new stage. 
but there are certain things, um, transparencies, accountabilities, and standards that probably should have been in place since, since day one. When you look at city departments, um, some city departments are better at that than others. Some would say that Rec and Parks is good or bad at it. Some would say DWP is good or bad at uh, some of those things. And as, as all of you have said, as all of you have said, some neighborhood councils don't don't need the help, don't need you know don't need to handhold it, which is true. But there are, as a city entity, as you all are very clear, saying we're a city entity, there are certain uh, processes, certain standards that that need to be uh, that need to be in place and should have been in place since day one. Um, if you're part, as being part of the city family, and and so I think that 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 will continue to be part of this discussion. I just want to say something about the the funding system. The problem is, for ten years, there's never been a system. It's done has its regulations, and then every neighborhood council does its own thing. And my neighborhood neighborhood council does its own thing pretty well. But when we just got this reconciliation thing from done. Your thing doesn't talk to my thing in the same way. So I have to spend hours going over the reports to figure out how your system fits to my system. And that's not a problem with the city bureaucracy. That's the problem with the city not establishing a system. I mean, I will say a word about the city bureaucracy, is it's not a problem with the city's rules. I think there's a problem with Dunn's incompetence. Yeah. I cannot tell you the number of times my neighborhood council has submitted paperwork to get something paid, and I stood there next to my treasurer saying, and stick the packet in the envelope, and we get communications back from Dunn that something is missing. Again, that's not a problem with the system, that's a problem with the people and the management of the system. And I think for too many years, that sort of incompetence has been allowed to fester. Um, you know, I don't know what the right answer is, but in terms of, you know, I guess in terms of openness and transparency, my gut sense is having one system that all neighborhood councils are following. I think now the system of having all the, you know, the credit card charges and the check things like available on the website is a great thing. I'm not sure how that would work if it's all done through a whole bunch of different nonprofits. How you could do make it that transparent. Um, but I mean, I think like I said the real problem is we've never tried having a city system, and then we've not taken action against really the incompetence of it. Now, you know, just like even this spreadsheet that they sent out, it's like giving me a list of hundreds of expenditures by neighborhood council that are not sorted by neighborhood council, and yet the Excel spreadsheet is not sortable. <laughs> Like, that's not, that's a problem with basic, you know, people's basic capability of doing their job. But I mean, by the way, while you're answering, I've had a question, move the microphone over here so the people can see the screen. We've already moved the line. Okay, so it's not going to be the microphone. It's not going to be Anybody want to address that? No, <laughs> no, I, 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 at least people can see. Way up. At the moment, though, they are, you know, understaffed. They are working. We can't hear the answer. So, thanks. It's, it's very hard to defend the department and the accountant. You know, the department, which at this point is actually now more understaffed than ever. It sounds of four people or five people. Um, we need to invite people to do a better job if they had. So quite honestly, that's a part of my own personal thinking about getting CDB's help, right, to set up the kind of systems that's what CDB does. You know, I'm sort of frustrated at this point with the department's, you know, incompetence to be able to support the funding program. But, uh, I, you know, I, I think no matter what happens, we have to make, you know, the bookkeeping, systematize the bookkeeping. And we have to have, you know, basic systems that will talk to each other, no matter what happens. Hi, I'm Nina Royal. I'm a former treasurer of the Summers County and Neighborhood Council. I'm also the publisher and editor of this newspaper, North Valley Report. The reason I bring this up is I advertise.